or in the manger. If you had a hymn book, um, and uh, these days we tend to do it on the screen, but if you had a hymn book with you and you got to the bottom of the hymn, you would be expecting to see the name of the person who wrote it. And it is Mr. or Mrs. or Ms. Anonymous, because nobody knows who wrote Away in a Manger. And when you think about it, it's a, it's a wonderful carol that we like singing at this time of year, and you think, well, it's a shame, really, isn't it? We don't know who wrote it. It could have been quite a, a well-known uh, name to us by now. Uh, we don't know where he comes from. We don't know whether he was a man or a woman. We don't know what country. Well, I'm, we're assuming he was from an English-speaking country because it was written in English. Uh, but we haven't got any background at all. And isn't that sad? Isn't it sad that, in a sense, this person who wrote Away in the Manger is to us a nobody? Well, he isn't a nobody to God, is he? But he's a nobody uh, to us. He is someone who is unknown. And that's, I think, quite sad. My daughter, who's uh, a few years older now than Sam, <laughs> she, uh, she used to hate uh, being my daughter at times um, because she would say, people always come up to me and say, aren't you Mike's daughter? Now, I'm having the reverse problem these days. They say to me, aren't you Sean's father? Um, but at least... Uh, for her, she, she was known, uh, she had somewhere uh, where she belonged, and she had history. And this particular hymn writer has no history, as far as we know, no background. We don't know a person's name. But what I want to say this morning is this, that we know a great deal about the Lord Jesus. In fact, we've had a, a little film that we were showing about Jesus and the Bible tells us in four Gospels all about Jesus, and then you have uh, the account of what happened after uh, Jesus died as well, in all the letters in the New Testament. But the, first, the thing I want to say this morning is this. Jesus has two names. Jesus has two names. One name is enough, isn't it? But Jesus has got two names. And in fact, as was read uh, to us by faith, we remembered that he had several names. <laughs> he was called Mighty God, Wonderful Counselor, uh, the Prince of Peace. There were wonderful titles, wonderful names. But in this passage in Matthew chapter 1, which was read to us by Sam, we read there that the Lord Jesus Christ has given two names. And the first of those names is this one. I'll get there. Emmanuel. Okay. So we're going to be looking at Matthew uh, chapter 1, verse 21 to 23. And there, uh, at the bottom there, verse 24, 23, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. And the people in, living in Israel at the time, they knew that the child would have this name, Emmanuel. Because 500 or so years before, the prophet Isaiah, and uh, uh, Verity read it uh, uh, to us, uh, she, um, it was said there that the child was going to be called Emmanuel, uh, God with us. Now, what that word Emmanuel means God with us, what it's telling us is this, that this baby that was born in Bethlehem was not only a very special baby, but he, had, he was going to come down from heaven to be on earth, and he was going to come not just to be born as a, an ordinary baby, as that film told us. It wasn't just simply going to be born in Bethlehem, he wasn't simply going to be born to a mother. He, in fact, is God's son. He is 
the Son of God. He is God come in human form, truly man, and yet truly God. And he'd come as the Son of God. Now, what was the Son of God to do? Well, the first thing that we can read in the Gospels is this, that the Son of God, Jesus, would tell us all about his Father in heaven. He would tell us what his Father was like and what his Father in heaven was to do. And we have a reminder of that in John 14, verse 9 and 10. Jesus, is. this is in the night in which the Lord Jesus Christ is betrayed, just a few hours before he has to go to the cross at Calvary, and he's told his disciples that he is to go away from them, but not only that, he's, going to, he's telling them he's going to die, and interestingly, he tells, he tells them he's going to come back to life again. Um, but he says to his disciples there in the upper room, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip, one of the disciples? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, the words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. In other words, what Jesus is saying to his disciples, he's been with them for three years, and in those three years he's told them about his Father in heaven. And in fact, he's pointed out the fact that he is the second person of the Trinity. He is God's Son. If they've, seen the fa- if they've seen him, they've seen the Father also. But he has also not only been telling them about God, the Father, he's been telling them also and proving also that he is uh, God come in the flesh by the miracles that he had performed. And let me take you to one of those miracles, or at least give you the background to those, one of those miracles. It's in John chapter 11. And this is probably uh, the most famous of miracles of the Lord Jesus Christ that he performed. There was a man called Lazarus. And Lazarus and his uh, two sisters were friends of Jesus, and Lazarus had died. And Lazarus had died, for f- and he'd been dead for four days, and they put him in a tomb, and then Jesus arrives and miraculously, Jesus cries out, Lazarus, come forth. And this dead man who'd been dead for four days comes out of the tomb, alive. People had seen this man had, been, had, had died. They'd been at the funeral service. Everybody knew that Lazarus had died. Everybody knew when Lazarus died. And there they were, four days later after Lazarus has died, seeing Lazarus alive, walking around. And all because of Jesus, and all because he is God's son. And this is what Jesus said. He speaks to the sister of Lazarus. This is before the miracle. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And he poses a question uh, to Mary. Do you believe this? And of course, that's the question that we need to ask ourselves. Do we believe it also? The third thing that happened that shows us that he is Emmanuel, God with us, is that he died on a cross. He died on a cross, and that death on the cross wasn't the end, because in three days, He himself rose from the dead. But he died on the cross, taking upon himself the punishment we richly deserve for our own sins. He became the sin bearer. He became the substitute. God, because of our ungodlinesses, our sins, our rebellions, the bad things that we do, should have punished us. But instead of punishing us, If we believe in him, if we believe in Jesus, Jesus takes the punishment for himself. Now, the other name that Jesus has, which I've already quoted three times, (laughs) 
It's very simply this, Jesus, the name that we normally speak uh, uh, about him. And in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, we read these words. And she, that's Mary, will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. That name, Jesus, means God saves. And the angel said that this child, Jesus, will save his people from their sins. But who are his people? Who are the people that the angel is talking about for whom Jesus is going to come and going to save them from their sins? Well, it's all and everyone who believes and trusts in Jesus, and especially trust in who Jesus is and what Jesus is going to do when he goes to that cross at Calvary. But what will he save us from? Well, he saves us from our sins. Those bad things that we do to ourselves at times, or we do to other people, or we do to God himself. Our sins stop us going to heaven because heaven is a place where there is no sin. So our sins have to be dealt with. The sin has to be paid for. And this is what Jesus did when he went to the cross and died in our place. When Jesus died, it, it wasn't for everyone, full stop. It was for his people. But who are his people? It was for those who believe in him. It was for those who realized that they couldn't go to heaven without him. They realized that they were too bad to go to heaven. They were not good enough because they had sinned against God especially but against other folk as well. And they asked God's forgiveness. They were saying sorry to God for what they have done and asking the Lord Jesus Christ to come into their lives and expressing their faith and trust in Jesus. And that's what it means to be a Christian. That is what it means to have the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour. It means believing in him and trusting in him and realising that he had to go to that cross because that the sins, our sins had to be paid for and realizing that we are sinful and we need our sins to be paid for. And because of what Jesus did, then we are forgiven. But let me take you to what I think possibly is the best Christmas text of all. And it is John chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17. John chapter 3 verse 16 is the, perhaps the most famous verse in all of, of Scripture. But verse 17 needs to be understood as well. And so we read in John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's God's promise to us. But verse 17 tells us why Jesus has come. For God did not send his Son the Emmanuel, into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And that's why Jesus came. We know how Jesus was born, and we know what, Jesus, what happened to Jesus 33 years later, but he came to bring the great good news that the angels were singing on that uh, first Christmas night of the Saviour that was born. He came to save us, to pay for the price of our sins so that all who would, all and everyone who would believe in him would go to heaven and have eternal life. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise and we give you thanks for our Lord Jesus Christ once more. And at this time of year, we can get lost, Lord, in all the worldly things of presents and tinsel and uh, 
Christmas cards and Christmas meals and stuff like that. But help us, Lord, to remind ourselves again and again that this time of year is all about the Emmanuel, God coming into the world, Jesus being born, uh, that he is the saviour, the one who would rescue us from our sins and from hell and deliver us into eternal life in heaven with you. And we pray, Father, that that might be true for every single one of us, that we might have, our, we might have a faith and a trust, a believing and a loving uh, in our Lord Jesus. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.